Hello, quick video on power series and using them for some um, quite famous um, sort of complex number uses. In the last video, we looked at uh, finding f of x using the Maclaurin approach, and we actually worked out what e to the x was as a Maclaurin series. What I'd like to do is look at cos of x and sine of x and see how we can connect those up with e to the x. So let's start by saying our series here is going to be f of x is going to be cos of x and we're going to do it around x equals zero because it, and that's Maclaurin. So when x equals zero, f of zero is one, the cos of zero is one, yeah? So that gives us our first term there. We know it's a one, don't we? Um, next we're going to match the differentials. So we differentiate cos dx and we get uh, minus sine of x. And when that's zero, when the value of x is zero, sine of zero is zero. So we now know what our, that our second term, f of zero, that is f dash of zero is zero. If we differentiate uh, minus sine of x, we get minus cos of x. And when x equals 0, minus cos of x equals minus 1. So we now know that, that uh, f double dash there is 1. Yep. And as you can predict, we're going to get into a sequence, aren't we? Because when we differentiate that one, we can minus cos becomes plus sine. And sine of 0 is 0 is 0. And so we now know our that this, um, um, if we put in our f treble, f treble dash will be zero. And if we repeat it again, look, we've come back to cos of x, and therefore f, the fourth differential of f of x is cos of x, and that zero is back to one. So you can you see that we've now completed a full cycle, and we've done it four times, we come back, to cos of x and so this is just going to be a repeating cycle and if we substitute those values into our um, into our uh, Maclaurin then the first one, our first term is going to be 1 or then there's going to be no x term because the f dash of x, uh, 0 was 0 and we're not going to have a, a cubed term because the f triple dash is 0 and f double phi, uh, fifth differential is 0 and the seventh differential is 0, yeah? So we're only left with the even terms. So we end up with 1 and we get minus, because of the cos cycling to sine, minus 1 over uh, 2 factorial. And then having completed the cycle, um, with our second cos differential, we end up back at a plus, uh, four factorial, then back to a minus six factorial, back to a plus eight factorial. So here we can see a very nice series here, isn't it? Which you might be looking at thinking that's got some similarities to the series for e to the x. Now, if we did the same process with sine of x, then sine of x, the first term, f0, is going to be 0, isn't it? Because sine of x equals 0 is 0. And when we differentiate that, we end up with plus cos. So, so our first term here would be a 0, wouldn't it? On its own, so I'm going to write that there, sorry. When we then differentiate that, we get cos, and cos of 0 is 1. So our coefficient for our first term here is going to be 1. And then when we differentiate it again, we get back to sine. So we end up with a zero uh, for the x squared. And when we differentiate it again, we come back. And as we've gone around the cycle, we've now differentiated by a cos. We end up with a minus sine. Um, so we end up with minus 1 over 3 factorial. Um, then differentiate again, we get back to sine. So all our even terms are disappearing here in this series and the signs again are cycling minus then a plus then a minus yeah so we can see that these two uh, Maclaurin series look remarkably similar don't they or they sort of match up together and we can start to see that they they seem to rep um, relate to e to the x don't they now 
The way we can make them connect entirely with e to the x is if we think of it in our complex number world that our cos element of n, if we're working in radia, radial um, see, um, arrangements, polars rather, um, that if we were putting out our complex number, it would be cos plus i sine of whatever the value of the angle is, yeah, our argument. So if we looked at that, here's our cos series as we just calculated it. And in our second series, here, if we do i sine, so we're going to put an i in front of each of these, we end up with this series here. Now, if we looked at e to the power i x, we calculated that series before, um, and that would we would get our 1 and our 1 plus i of x, then i of x squared over 2 factorial, i of x cubed over 3 factorial, i of x to the power 4 over 4 factorial, yep, all the way up from then on. And if we take our i out here and we start multiply, opening this bracket up, so in the first term we get i on its own, in the second term we've got an i squared, well that's what creates our minus 1, doesn't it? Um, and that's now become a real number. In our third term, we've got our minus, but we've got another i coming through. So we've got a minus i to the power uh, over 3 factorial x cubed. And then we're back to a plus, because here we've got i to the power 4, uh, I, which is i, um, i squared all squared. So that's minus 1 squared gives us plus 1. So now we're back to a couple of plus terms, and then we go over to some minus terms. So can we now see that this equates to that, this series here, um, sorry, the odd terms here, that one, that one, and that one, relate to this I sine part. And these are all the imaginary parts, aren't they, of our series. Those are all our imaginary parts here, the, the uh, first, sorry, the second, the fourth, with um, six, etc. Those are all our imaginary terms, and all our real terms. There's our a real term here: the first one, the third, the fifth. These all match entirely with the cos series. So what we can see, therefore, is e to the e to the i of x is going to be our cos series plus i times our sine series. So what we've effectively proved is this identity, which is extremely useful in complex numbers, and we've done it using Maclaurin. So in summary, cos of x is this series. We found our cos of x series is this series here. Our sine of x is the series, our second series here. And as e to the i x is a combination of the two of those, and therefore e to the power i of x is cos of x plus i sine of x in complex numbers. So I hope that's of use.